Hey everybody, it's Robot here, Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web. So, what do we have here? Well, this is an ET4. So, ET4 is pretty much 20 years old. Uh, pretty much Vespa LX or the Vespa ET4s, they're all getting to that ripe old age where they're going to start needing some fixing. Well, you start having little things fail. Of course, the first thing that you're going to lose on the instruments is the clocks. And you know why we're here on this video, because it's the description of the video. Uh, the speedometer and odometer are not ticking. So I'm going to show you what you could expect on this age of a scooter, what you need to replace. So you're better prepared to fix the speedometer and odometer. And believe me, it's really annoying when you look down there and you don't have no idea what your speed is. I mean, you can kind of judge the speed. But just to set yourself up for success, you want to get the parts we have available at Scooter West. I highly recommend just buying the complete speedometer cable. And that's 56116R. That's the complete cable. But if you're looking to save a buck, we do have the original inner cable. So that's the cable that actually spins inside the housing of the speedometer cable. It's all mechanical. 561806, we do have that available for the ET2 and ET4 only. A lot of the later models, they just went to a complete cable, kind of makes more sense. A uh, real important thing to have, and it's a very popular item, we sell quite a few of them for these older Vespas. It's pretty much universal across many Vespas, and it's the speedometer drive gear. Uh, 267819, sorry I didn't remember that one, but that's the part number for the speedometer drive gear. And it pretty much covers all the modern Vespas that have a mechanical speedometer cable. So pretty much everything 2014 and earlier. Um, no Primaveras or Sprints or any GTSs 2015 and later, they all had an electronic uh, system that's much more reliable. Uh, we're gonna take the hub apart. So in addition to replacing all these parts, the grease in the front hub is gonna be completely dried up and crispy. I already know that. I don't I mean take it apart, but I know it's completely crispy. So we need a cotter pin because we're going to take apart the front hub to lubricate the wheel bearings. So enough of me talking, let's get right to it. And I'll kind of go over the tools as we go through this job together. All right, want to set yourself up for success and you're going to need to lift the front end of the scooter. Best way to go about it is with a scissor jack and on the Scooter West web store, scooter jack, we have these for a very affordable price. Uh, very handy. It's got a rubber mat. Pretty much put it underneath the scooter. If you have something like a side stand, that gets in the way a little bit. So typically I'll kick the side stand down and just go ahead and start taking the pressure. I have the scooter on a center stand, uh, obviously on this lift to kind of bring it up a little bit. But all I'm looking to do is get the front tire off the, the ground. So go ahead and get it under there. If you have the side stand, you kind of have to have that out of the way. And now we can just lift it right off. I'm going to leave the tire contacting the ground. Uh, go ahead and brake free all your wheel lug nuts. You may need to hold the front brake, keep the wheel from spinning. Six millimeter Allen wrench is what I'm using here. Very similar to taking the lug nuts off a car. And pretty much everything I'm doing here applies to any year Vespa ET2, ET4, any of the Vespa LXs, a Vespa S150, even the Vespa LXV. It's a little bit different, but the handlebars completely different, but very close. And a GTS for the most part, it's all the same. It's very, very similar hub for the GTS. And the reason I'm starting down low and working my way up is on this age of a scooter, it's almost guaranteed you're going to have to replace that speedometer gear. Uh, there's been plenty of times where we sell somebody a speedometer cable and then they realize uh, the speedometer cable doesn't even turn. Um, of course, here in the service department, we would diagnose it and see if the gear is stripped out. And I already know so because I had one of my technicians working on this thing. And you can see this thing's pretty weathered, just not the nicest condition. Uh, at this age of scooter, sometimes you'll be replacing a caliper or a master cylinder, maybe a rotor as well at this age. Um, so just FYI, you know, other stuff is deteriorating as well. Um, 
Then we're gonna go ahead and move over to the neck other side and pull the caliper. So again, use your six millimeter, use the basic Allen wrench works, or you can use something a little more substantial like this uh, T wrench here. Um, also, you know, you could use, get a socket that goes on a three eighths drive socket that has a six millimeter Allen key on it. All right, separate those, keep the washers with it. Caliper should just pull right off. And yeah, perfect time to look at it. Could use new brakes, so I'll go ahead and put new brake pads in there as well. We'll do that right when we assemble it. Probably could use a rotor. I don't think it's worn to the thickness limit. It's just ugly looking at this point. So this is the easiest way you could uh, remove a cotter pin. So this is the axle that supports the wheel bearings of the front end. Let's go ahead. Take this stuff off. And I think in a prior video a couple years ago, I covered this job, but I kind of figured do it all together. And now these scooters at the age where they definitely need this kind of stuff, make it all in one video. So take that little castle right off, throw the cotter pin away. Uh, 012789-B is the correct cotter pin from Scooter West. Uh, get your 22 millimeter socket. So make sure you don't topple the scooter, kind of want to put your hands on it. And you want to have a pretty large size ratchet. Or you could use an impact that would do the trick just as well. Nut comes right out there and there's no wash or anything. And see how stiff this turns? There's no brakes to drag it. That's actually the grease that's hardened to nothing. The, the wheel bearings typically are still in good shape, but if you're gonna continue to ride it on that old grease, it's gonna um, deteriorate your wheel bearings in a short order. So when they're on there this tight, uh, best way to get it off is with some type of soft hammer. This is a brass headed hammer. And we're gonna just move it around and hit it on the screws for the rotor. I do not wanna hit it on the edge of the rotor like that. So keep your hand on the scooter. And it's getting pretty close to wanting to come off. And this is what it looks like. See this grease? It's like plastic. It feels like complete plastic. And I'll just show you, get my knife out here. We're gonna chip that stuff out. It is more of a plastic than is a grease. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and loosen the cable. Um, you have your speedometer cable that goes right in there. There's an eight millimeter fastener that holds the screw. This one's coming loose. I think my technician already inspected it. If it's really tight, you're gonna to need to put some heat on this because the grease sometimes gets to the threads or, or even corrosion will get to the threads of this little plate. So I'm gonna remove the screw. It's an eight millimeter screw with a little wave washer. I'll put that right on the disc. And then we can kind of work the cable out and it comes out of a rubber bushing right there. We have this little plate that will separate. Let's see if this cable does anything. This cable does not even turn. So the last thing we want to do is, I do, I do not want to run this uh, speedometer drive with a new gear because uh, this will strip the brand new gear. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and pull this little rubber bit out. And the rest of it, we're going to have to push out once we start getting this cleaned out. All right, so at this point, just start with a flat blade screwdriver. You know, you got gunk all over the place, but the gunk we're really concerned about is the gunk that's behind this um, drive right here. You could take the whole hub off. Um, if you're looking to do this in a pinch, you don't need to necessarily take it off. There's a seal right here, and it does come off if you get the, a big flat blade screwdriver. You can pry it out. And um, up to you if you want to reuse it. We do have the seal available. I'll probably put a new one. You can see how crispy everything is in there. Um, that's just hardened old grease. 
and at this point you could easily scrape that grease out and we're going to try to get as much as we can out of this hub and obviously be careful not to slide the scooter around because it's on the jack here and just go ahead and scrape it out um, the next next concern is the speedometer drive gear is in the very bottom it's probably completely melted with this hardened grease and we'll be able to eventually pry that out of the the hub here and this is kind of all vespas i mean if you have an old vintage vespa the very very similar setup it doesn't have a disc brake but it may have a drum but the grease may be hardened to this uh, plastic consistency right here and if you want to take this to the second next level i've found the grease that's sealed between the needle bearings back there it seems to be better quality but sometimes it's a good idea to change that as well so and eventually we'll get this gear out of here once we get most of this hardened grease scraped. And, you know, if you leave some of it behind, it's not the end of the world. I do have this carburetor spray that will kind of break it up a little bit. And I think the first time I featured this was in an, what you can expect on a used scooter, some of this stuff. And this is, you know, I would say it's any brand. I mean, I've taken apart Hondas, you know, there's just stuff that ages. The thing with scooters, sometimes you don't rack up miles. Uh, with a car, you know, a 20 year old car is gonna have, be used its whole life and not sit. A lot of times a scooter will sit. So there's a lot of stuff that deteriorates from age and not necessarily mileage. And one thing to keep in mind, if I'm gonna spray this in there and put heat with a torch on there, uh, not a good combination because you're gonna, end it with some flames that you don't really want. So we'll get some heat in there and not so much heat to melt the gear all the way, but enough to loosen that hardened grease to get that gear out. So of course you want to exercise a lot of caution when using a torch or any type of open flame. Alternatively, you could use something like a heat gun to do this, but I'm just going to heat it right down there. And I already see the grease starting to boil away. It doesn't take much heat. This is a pretty thin wall. Um, uh, stuff but you can see in that hub the grease is starting to boil away and eventually we'll be able to get that gear right out so at this point the gear and everything see how it just dropped right out that gear is probably trash it's completely stripped make sure it's not too hot I'm gonna separate it from that metal thing if everything's in really bad shape you may just want to buy new parts and clean that little metal spacer all right at this point we can get the last of the grease out and it's a little easier once it's heated up too. This is a little more like goo instead of the, the hardened rock stuff. So have a rag handy to wipe it off. And there's all these little crevices. Go around there. And this last amount of grease Another way to break it up is with breaking parts cleaner like this. You can buy this at O'Reilly's, uh, any type of auto parts store. And you can get in there with a little toothbrush if you like, kind of clean it up. A couple rags, just wipe it out. You can, I can actually see bare metal now, so we're looking good. Um, use the screwdriver a little bit more if you want to scrape that last little bit, some of those little bits of the plastic from that gear that's uh, shredded. Again, I'm just doing the, the showing you how to do it quick and easy here. Um, if you really want to nerd out with this, you could take all these assemblies apart and clean them in a parts washer. But you know, sometimes in a shop environment, there's limited budgets and time, so you know, sometimes do do your best and. You know, and clean out enough where there's no, not enough residual grease that's gonna damage anything. So that got a ton out. I see that cavity is really, really clean. And inside there is pretty clean at this point. So I think we're pretty good. Uh, this rag's got plenty of goo on it. Throw all these parts away and the rag. Some of the other parts we're gonna have to clean is that hub and this little spacer right here that's gooey. So, 
and just kind of let that brake cleaner work its way into the goo and you'll be able to like just break it away. So it doesn't take much. It's heat and the brake cleaner kind of does the trick. All right. So now we're going to clean out the hub, kind of get the majority of it out there. The thing you need to take extra care of is these bearings in here. Um, the grease usually is uh, worked a lot more, so it's it's more like grease inside those needle bearings is what I find. But in the lower speed stuff, like where this um, speed on drive gear is where it's hardened up the molasses here. So I think we're gonna do a similar technique is heat this up, kind of the break, break things away. Then we'll go at it with uh, the solvent. So there's some old spiders and webs and stuff. If you're careful with the torch, you can make a lot of progress with the heat that it puts into things. Yeah, obviously I'm not heating up so much, but I'm heating up, uh, I don't know. I was gonna measure that, maybe 150 degrees, 200 degrees. Enough to boil water. And we'll get a little wire brush in here too, kind of clean that up. And I can see it's already melting up some of the grease. And have some rags handy, obviously be careful not to get burnt. But I'm able to wipe a bunch of that grease out of here. So see how a bunch of that grease went from hardened plastic to something a little more melty that I'm able to wipe, wipe free. You know, feel these bearings. That bearing actually feels really, really nice. Here's another little test. I think I've done this in the past on other videos. Put, put it on the shaft here. They're very quiet so that we know that bearing is good. The needle bearings last a very long time. We're gonna clean those out. I'm gonna get a little wire brush and we'll do the last little scrubs so now that it's cooled down a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and spray it with some of this brake cleaner. I got a wire brush handy. Um, just give it a little scrub all the way around. Have some rags handy. And we're just kind of cleaning the threads of this worm gear right here. Um, you may take a couple, couple tries here. We'll get in there as well. Get some, start with the dirty rags and then move on to much cleaner rags as we make progress with cleaning this stuff up here. And obviously I'm wearing gloves here because brake clean isn't that fun to get on your hands. Take a clean section of the rag, kind of get in there and clean those needle bearings, you know. They're still in good shape. I find these wheel bearings on the Vespas, they last a very long time. Uh, they give you quite a long service life, but you know, obviously repacking them with fresh grease is, is kind of key to keeping them going another 20 years from now. So, so we'll go ahead and scrape this last little bit of goo out of there. The worm gear is really, really clean. I can see got it fairly clean. Again, brake cleaner and heat, but obviously not used in conjunction with each other because brake clean is highly flammable, but the heat helps melt away some of that grease. So I think at this point, we're gonna give it the last little cleaning. I'll get a brand new rag in there, wipe it off clean. We'll repack that with fresh grease. There's also a small seal in there. If you were gonna rebuild this, replace it, I would, it would take it apart. I would put a new seal there, but not really necessary. That keeps the clean grease in with the wheel bearings while the grease that's a little more dirty that drives the speedometer drive is separate from these wheel bearings. So it's just an added layer of protection. So let's see how that grease is still pretty, pretty good shape. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the oil seal for the front hub. Part number is 177494. Find it on the Scooter West web store. There's the decal on it. And the thing is, it's pretty difficult to get a large socket um, over this. But ideally, since everything's gonna be filled with some grease, keep that disc brake out of the way because you 
don't want to be getting grease on the disc. Um, we'll go ahead and grease that inner lip of this metal edge that this new seal goes on and same with the, the new seal. So I want to get nice and square with this here. Um, I have my new rag right there and we're going to go ahead and tap it in place with a hammer. So it's kind of want to it's kind of going to want to go crooked on you at first. So, and it's not a super critical seal. So if it gets a little, a little crooked on you, no big deal. And the thing is it's supposed to go a little deeper than what it is. So you're going to want to go all the way around with a little punch. Just do it in little steps and they'll go in pretty square, especially these nice metal seals. This is a little better than the one that was originally in there. Those, the all rubber seals are a little more flexible. And you can pretty much bottom it out, it'll be fine. There's like a lip in there. I hear that, I hear the noise of the Just fine, just like that. So got that tapped in place. Got a fresh seal in there. Next, we'll go ahead and install our brand new speedometer drive gear. And you can see the way this works is it meshes with the, the gear at a specific angle. So it meshes with that and that's what transmits your wheel speed to the wheel here. So that's how that works. You wanna see what the old one looks like? It's probably not salvageable. Usually they're stripped is what I find once they get to that level. So two ways this goes in. There's a smaller hole and a larger hole. The smaller hole goes in towards the back. And a lot of times you want to test fit this. Make sure you got all the, uh, the grease cleaned out. It fits in there really nice. I already checked that, so it's good. And then we'll go ahead and get real liberal with the grease here. So this is a maximum grease. I feel this stuff just I've been using this for years and I've seen hubs that I've taken apart and it still is in really good shape compared to the original grease. So go ahead and pop that in there and we'll set in there. Then you take that metal spacer, put a little grease on that as well. It's kind of messy and real stringy, this, this grease, but um, it kind of holds everything together. So and now at this point, I would just take a finger full of grease, something like that, and try not to get it too much on the outside of the seal and just give it a finger full of grease, as I like to say in here. Um, that's all you need. And anything on the outside, go ahead and wipe it off because all that's gonna do is attract more dirt. The next part, clean your gloves because touching that disc brake, um, with greasy hands is gonna affect the, the brake performance. Um, two things you can go about, you can replace this rotor if you're gonna do new brakes. Um, oftentimes these screws are gonna be pre-seized up, so you're gonna need to put some heat at, on those rotor bolts, or just I would suggest just ordering brand new rotor bolts uh, if you're gonna remove them, because you may need to drill them out. Um, or we'll scuff that up with uh, 80 grit. I really know the scooters the brake rotor is not warped. Uh, it measures the right width, even though it's a little ugly from corrosion. Uh, still has service life on it. So, and I would tend not to want to sand this with this open because you're going to get grit into these bearings. So we're going to go ahead and put this all together. Another finger full of grease right inside the wheel bearings. And you want to pack it into the needle bearings and then push the rest of the grease further down into the bearing so it gets towards that roller bearing in there. The, so maybe you probably get another one. You don't want to overpack these because as they heat up, it will start swelling the grease out um, and make a mess and attract more dirt in your hub and maybe even sling it onto the disc brake. So at this point, go ahead and just fill this gear with some grease and you're all pretty set. So clean your hands and we're ready to put this all back together. So go ahead and carefully, it's probably gonna push some old grease out of that hole there. Kinda wanna work it into place, into that gear. 
so oftentimes it may want to push the gear out. So you may need to um, give it a couple little taps, just slowly get it in place. And with your new speedometer cable, you can stick a toothpick in where what you know what turns the speedometer, and see that all make sure it all works. So I'm gonna put the nut on there for right now. Where's my socket? Oh, there it is. And we'll get our wrench and just keep the speedometer drive from popping out. And just do it in a little steps, make sure it's, nothing's binding. I like to just kind of work it along the way, so make sure everything's working. And I can feel the gear spinning just fine in there. And we're pretty much bottomed out right now. So, and when you turn it, it kind of wants to push the gear. I have my thumb on that gear right now. And at this point, you want to torque just about 38 foot pounds, which is if you're doing this, you know, you put a little muscle into it. It's not a super critical torque. You get the torque wrench out if you're not familiar with uh, how much you should put into it. Um, and then you have the backup right here. So we're going to go ahead and put the castle nut, line up a slot. Get our cotter pin in. It's a little bit shorter version of this cotter pin. Not the same width as that, the one on the rear. Sometimes you want to use your hammer. And you see the two ears are popping out right there. And you're going to have some friction on this with that heavier grease along with the speedometer drive. Um, obviously as the, the grease heats up, it's gonna free up. So there's nothing to worry about that there's a little bit of friction. But definitely shouldn't be crunchy or grinding. And it's pretty critical you get these tabs all the way in because they'll get in the way of the wheel. So have that all together. We'll put our grease away. We're kind of done with the grease for the front. And we'll get some sandpaper. We'll go ahead and scuff that rotor up and we'll pop new uh, disc brakes and uh, pads in there next. So I have some 80 grit sandpaper, emery cloth, and I'll just go ahead and break the gloss on here. So we got a brake caliper right here. There's a little dust cover that pops right off. You can take that off even with the wheel in place. Um, and then there's an E-clip right here. Make sure you don't lose it. Use a screwdriver, you could use some a little pick. Uh, pretty much just get behind it and you'll be able to pop that little clip off. Um, use a little bit bigger screwdriver than you sh normally could be using, but it's what I have on hands. Save the time. Got that little E clip out of the way. And then we'll get the pin out of the way. Made the pins a little stuck. This is where you may need to have your hammer handy. And we'll go ahead and walk that pin out. So before you remove the pads, we're going to go ahead and spread the uh, caliper. So you want to save this little clip. If you're not sure where that clip goes, it can go either direction, but it's supposed to go here. So I'll make a little mark just to show you that's the side where it makes contact with that inside of the caliper here. And looking in there, it looks like the pistons are pretty clean. And it's not gonna hurt anything if you spray it out with some brake cleaner here. Kinda get any of the old debris out of there. Don't really need to use a wire brush, but just to clean it up. And go ahead and get a big fat screwdriver, maybe even bigger than this, and get it between those old pads. We don't care about those old pads, so go ahead and just twist. And that will push those pistons back into place. And if you can't get them in, there's either too much rust on the pistons or your brake fluid reservoir is overfilled. So I got the one in, no problem. And we're getting the other one in as well. So, so there you go. They're pretty much pushed all the way in. And you can see how thin those pads are. They're just at the end of their life. Uh, this, this scooter has so many uh, miles on it. It had uh, EBC brake pads, so some aftermarket pads in there to begin with. Um, not the original Gramica or Hing Tong pads. Um, 
So maybe you're looking to save a buck when you replace the brake pads. At Scooter West, we always carry both the OEM, oftentimes a centered higher end racing pad that's gonna eat at your rotor a little quicker but give you better braking performance and also an affordable aftermarket option. So if you have a Vespa ET4 or LX ET2, S150, you're gonna be looking for the BP 030 AM on the Scooter West web store. And these are a uh, name brand, these are new friend. They make clutch plates for old vintage Vespas and they make brake pads, any type of friction material. So you have the brand new brake pads that have plenty of material life on them. And we'll go ahead and set them in there. Obviously the friction material kind of faces um, they face each other right there. The caliper is going to go on like, like that. So I'm going to start by getting the pin started through the thing. You don't put grease on these pins. Then we'll go ahead and put the anti rattle clip. If this clip uh, is really loose in there, you may want to bend it. They do have a little arrow on the, little, the clip as well. You see a little arrow in there that shows the direction it should be installed. That's a wheel rotation direction. And now we get the, the pin just past this clip, which puts friction on that pin, kind of prevents the rattling or squealing of the brakes. So uh, it takes a little bit of work, especially with gloves on. Sometimes it's hard to get on there. You may want to just give it a little tap. And then align the pin so it goes through the, the last brake pad and also the hole in this caliper. At this point, we'll go ahead and spread the pads to be much more gentle because they're brand new brake pads. And um, we'll put, go ahead and put the E-clip on there. So you can see the direction, the hose goes in the bottom and this rotor spins this direction. So the arrow and the clip is like that. And you can kind of see the hole arrangement of how that goes back together. And to go ahead and push the E-clip on there, get it set in place, have some needle nose handy. And just go ahead and click that right in there. And we could even put the cover on. You could even wait to put the cover on either way, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. And since those pistons are pushed in, we'll go ahead and move to the other side and tighten those caliper bolts. So I got the screw with the wave washer. If that wave washer is really flat, I would suggest replacing it or at minimum put some Loctite on these threads. Loctite's not necessary. They didn't do it from the factory. So, and some of the older ET4s, they even had a clip on this lower thing that held the uh, speedometer cable in place. This one is not present or it's just missing. Not the most critical thing, but you sometimes see that in some cases. So get those two uh, screws started go between the two and they're about 16 foot pounds if you're going to torque them with a torque wrench which is kind of the normal standardized torque for an eight millimeter fastener and before we go anywhere we want to double check the brakes i did believe this has already had fresh brake fluid in there so we're going to go, go ahead and pump the brakes and it's going to be a little noisy at first but when i pull the brake it's definitely holding that hub so go ahead and put the wheel back in place and get the holes all lined up. Got fairly fresh hardware for the wheel fasteners. Again, all these fasteners, if you had to replace them, they're all available at Scooter West. Um, if they're rusty or stripped, definitely a good idea to replace them. Get them all started just by hand initially. And we'll go ahead and Make sure it's kind of going on nice and square, the wheel there. Again, the final torque for these is about 15 or 16 foot pounds. If you want to use a torque wrench. And we'll go ahead and lower our scooter jack and let that tire do a touchdown on the ground. And at this point, do the final torque on all these um, fasteners. Make sure you keep track that you do all five of them. All right, so we'll start on the front, dismantle some of the body work. You have this old school Piaggio badge. These are a little harder to get off. Um, they 
North American scooters typically never have these badges on there. So if you're having trouble with, especially this older style badge, sometimes you just gotta get in there and push with a little screwdriver. I had the pry tool under there and we're able to get that off. Obviously starting from, if you're straddling the scooter from the left side, you do not wanna pry it from the right side. Uh, single screw under here, Phillips. Go ahead and set that aside. Um, this, this will move up. Sometimes you wanna get a, a screwdriver or a trim tool underneath that last louver to lift that little tab right there. So go ahead and set that aside. And at this point, there's a single screw right in the center of the headlight. And remove that screw, a pair of screws right here. I don't know if these are even the original screws, but they seem to be threading just fine in those fasteners there. And then we'll be moving from the backside. So right between the mirrors and below the switches, there's gonna be another pair of screws that hold the handlebar covers. And stay organized, because these screws are a different size compared to the ones you just took off on the front. This mirror is already loose, but there's a nut underneath here. So you get a 13 millimeter socket under here and get it on the nut, but I already have it loose. So kind of cheated there. You can spin the mirror and you have that nut fall right out. The other side, it threads right into the brake master cylinder. So there's a lock nut up at the top, 17 millimeter. You'd break that free and then spin that off. And at this point, we can carefully uh, pull the head handlebar cover right off. It's already got a nice uh, European headset on, headlight on there. That's a nice upgrade for your older ET4s. And we'll set that out back and then we'll move on to the back and dismantle the glove box. So go ahead and open the glove box. Um, it's got some interesting things going here in the glove box. These screws down below are definitely not the correct screws. Um, when I put it back together, I put the correct screws in here. So let me put some weird Allen screws in here. Come on, people. If you're going to paint your scooter, you lose the hardware. What's, what's going on with you? Uh, they don't just fall out on their own. It's, they're lost. That's typically the case here. These things are really long. So I'm going removing these Allen screws and they're going to go right into the bin once they come out. They should be a Phillips screw. This one's still present and it looks stripped. So let's see what kind of surprise we get in for there. So look at that screw. That's the wrong screw. That goes right in a bin. Should be a Phillips or on the later ones, it would be a Torx screw that has a step on it. And I'll show you what it looks like when we reassemble this glove box here. And this screw right here, usually it's a number three Phillips driver would do the, the trick a little easier. And there's one other surprise that you're going to find on an ET4 is typically there's a fuse holder on this uh, side, so there's a little screw right under here, and that's going to be tethered to the glove box. So we're going to go ahead and remove that screw, pull that cover up. Uh, the fuse holder's not even there, so somebody never put it back in the correct spot. Got a little rag kind of keeping things from grinding on each other. Go ahead and pull that glove box down and away. See this glove box? The door is all mangled because it's got a broken hinge. Not much you can do about that unless you just replace the whole glove box. Uh, both those hinges are broken. Uh, this latch is all messed up. This glove box is kind of useless at this point. You know, the door, if you put a new door on there, we could probably fix that, but somebody already painted the door. So, um, so we'll go ahead and just set that aside. We're not gonna mess with that any further. I'd love to put a new door, but not doing that on today's project. Um, I don't know why there's a zip tie there, but we're going to move to the front. There's our fuse holder. Check this out. Classy. Somebody painted it. So we'll put that back in the right spot. So at this point, we're going to remove the speedometer cable and it's going to be a nut that you could just loosen with your fingers. You may need to put a zip tie on there. Go ahead and pull that away. And then it's gonna go through some zip ties. You may need to cup the zip ties or usually you could pull the cable through. And there's the cable kind of from here. This cable is like busted. It's not even, 
Like I said, the cable's completely seized in there. It's probably not even worth uh, salvaging or trying to put a new inner cable. Uh, the next tricky part is fishing it through this uh, labyrinth up here. So it kind of goes through a little bit of a slot. I'm going pushing it up. And there's some missing clips that normally held this cable and spot in place. You know, there's a clamp that normally holds it to the fender back here, but that's missing, broken on this fender. So not the end of the world. We'll kind of secure it with some extra zip ties, but this complete cable is, uh, yeah, it's seized up and old and not usable anymore. So we'll throw that out. So we got a brand new cable. And that little clip that I was talking about is present on this one. We're gonna go ahead and remove it just for the time being, because it's gonna be easier to pull this cable through without this clip on there. And you may need to spread that little clip with either a needle nose or a diagonal. You can kind of grab it and I'm gonna put it back in place once we get it back in there. If you're putting up, if you have the whole fork out of the scooter, they're really easy to route all this stuff, but with the fender on the, the fork with it in the body, everything's really, really tight. So this thing just hinders your uh, installation. So go ahead and cut the grommet. It's still gonna be usable even after we give it a slice, we'll to put it back in place. And at this point, in front of the brake hose, we'll go ahead and route the cable. And of course, you're not going to be able to see what's going on up here. It kind of goes a little bit through a labyrinth here of the top of the fork casting. Definitely not the easiest job. You kind of, especially with everything in place, is pushing this new speedometer cable through. It's just really tight quarters. You'll eventually get it through. And I kind of have a flashlight with what I'm doing up there. And go ahead and pull that through. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and it normally would have a clamp. I could show you what this clamp looks like with the screw. There's no screw left on this fender. And this little clamp would hold the whole arrangement back here and the cable would go into the speedometer drive. So go ahead and take the rubber Spacer, go ahead and put that onto that little um, hole where the speedometer drive gear went in. Take your plate, the dirty side out, as I like to say on there, because you can't really flip it around. And while you're holding that, go ahead and install the washer and the bolt and start to thread that in place. So. Take my eight millimeter socket here, get, kind of get it close. We're not gonna tighten it all the way. And I pulled the inner cable out from the top and I have the tire off the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and just verify that this cable turns. So that's how you can check. Or you can stick a toothpick in there. It's turning just fine. So no problems there. And at this point, we have our cable here. And we'll go ahead and insert that right into that spacer there. And the inner cable is actually not in there installed just yet. We want to have some zip ties handy because this thing, we're not reinstalling this clip. Last thing I want is the cable interfering with the tire, hitting the tire here. So we'll go ahead and kind of just zip tie it along with this brake hose here. So we'll put a little zip tie here. Not, I don't want to do it so tight that it, you know, but it kind of keeps it with that brake cable. This is not the normal practice. If you had a brand new fender in there, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, the next step is we're going to go ahead and remove this lower screw right here because we'll go ahead and use a clip that kind of keeps that cable in place. So let's go ahead and remove the lower caliper screw. That earlier step, I told you that thing was missing, which is not surprising. 
and you leave the washer in there, that's fine. And we're going to go ahead and put the grommet that we cut. So go ahead and we'll get the clip, kind of open it up a little. Put all Went ahead and we're doing this job without removing the fork and the fender. So the way this little clip works is it just goes right in that little slot right there, kind of holds the cable and keeps it from rubbing on the rotor and also it kind of keeps the cable in position. So we're able to kind of use that little clip to hold everything where it should be. I put it back in the grommet and that's better than no clip there since it's included with the cable. We torque that to about 16 foot pounds. And now we're gonna move on to the back. So next we'll go ahead and install the inner cable. So very small amount of grease. You don't need much at all. And we'll just wipe the cable, this inner part of the speedometer cable only needs a very thin coat. If you over grease it, sometimes that adds too much friction and um, can strip out that gear. So it just needs a small amount of grease. More than what came on the cable, they do put a small amount of grease. At this point, we'll go ahead and put that into the housing. And sometimes you're going to run into little kinks. You may have to go back and forth a couple times or move the cable around. And especially in that curve, you'll feel a little bit of a resistance. And at this point, the last little bit, you're going to need to rotate to get it to engage. Another option is rotate the tire. So until we get it into that gear. And once, once you get the cable all the way in, it will engage with the gear and now we see a cable that's spinning so we're good right now so so at this point we have the cable goes up there's this zip tie that should be right here that's like a reusable zip tie right above the ignition key switch push that up and you notice the nut fell off the the cable so there's an o-ring that kind of keeps that uh, nut from falling down so just go ahead and slide that back in place not critical to the operation but it's helpful keeps that nut from dropping down and at this point we probably need a little bit more slack so I may loosen that zip tie and move the whole cable up just ever so slightly here And we'll go ahead and plug it right into the bottom of the speedometer. And again, sometimes you got to rotate the tire. I have the tire still off the ground. And we'll go ahead and thread this right onto the bottom of the speedometer. And at this point, I'm going to pull that cable down just a little bit. Uh, there's normally another little tie that will keep the cable right here behind this ignition box. Uh, that the original tie is missing, so you could just improvise. Go and put a zip tie, don't put it that tight, just enough so the cables kind of uh, stay loose in there. And you can see it kind of closely follows the, um, the brake cable. Kind of, so go ahead and check it all out, make sure everything's kind of, you know, it kind of does some weird stuff there a little bit, rotates around, but that's fine. Um, Alternatively, you could even put another zip tie right here, just loose around this whole uh, handlebar right here. Maybe we'll do that. It kind of keeps everything in place. Fork bearings are in. They're mediocre, I would say, on this scooter. At um, this point, speedometer should be working because we saw it spin in the cable. All right, so this door is pretty much garbage. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside. We'll put it back in place just so there's something covering the open opening here. Um, makes it a little easier. You got a pair of clips back here. Make sure those are in place. Normally they're not painted. You have this little mechanism for the glove box lock. And I talked about that fuse that they forgot to put in place. So that goes right through here. So we just totally space out and just never put it back in after they I think they did a wonderful paint job on this. Um, I don't know, sometimes you got amateur hour going. Uh, so go ahead and we're gonna 
hold this little lever up. This is pretty important if you're gonna successfully get the glove box on, then go down and up. And then we're gonna go ahead and push it into the leg shield trim, so. It's kind of nice with no glove box here. Um, I can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna upgrade this. These are the correct step screws that have kind of a beehive looking um, tip on them. So we'll go ahead and get those screws started. And then we have another one right here. I replaced that one that was all stripped. Put a nicer screw there. Pretty similar on an LX, pretty, pretty similar setup. And we'll do this last side here. I didn't look at the trim. So get those all tight. And before we close the glove box or reattach the glove box in this case, make sure that little lever works. So lever's working fine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and you pull this wire through and this little clip right here clips right in right here and that's where that, that little fuse holder sits. You have this little black knee pad as I like to call it. Put that in place, there's a small short little stubby screw from the bottom. And hypothetically if you're replacing the glove box you would have the glove box off and these little, uh, the combination of hinges and the limits would all go in there. Normally these glove boxes are pretty robust, but one thing to keep in mind, the plastics on these scooters is getting to be pretty old. So lock that uh, closed, just keep it closed. Um, at least we can get access to it and it covers up the hole. And then we'll move back to the front here. So you got the pair of screws right here. Uh, you gotta find the little clip, line it up. Get those back in place. Make sure everything functions on your dash before you put it all back together. So take my rag. So this is a perfect opportunity before you button up this handlebars to grease all the pivots. So you got your front brake and I'm using this Worth uh, spray grease. You could use white lithium. So all these pivots, this stuff's kind of a little messy. It's dripping onto the body, but I'll clean that up. Uh, you got your open bearing right there. You give that a little uh, spray grease. And other pivot that you want to lubricate is your rear brake. So you have your rear, rear brake, that's a mechanical brake, and the pivot right here. So, and everything's going to slide a little smoother. Even open up the brake if you want. And lastly, make sure all the lights and everything work before putting this all back together. So you make sure all the wires are tucked in there. And we'll snap that all back into place if the snaps are even present. There really aren't too many of them are left. So go ahead and get all the wiring tucked out of the way. And we'll go ahead and put this all back together here. It doesn't quite have all the clips, so it doesn't pull together. This is pretty typical of this age of scooter. Plastic tabs have broken. People have taken this apart. So we painted the scooter, so things aren't perfect. And at this point, we'll go ahead and put the screws in there single screw in the middle here. And probably with something like this where the tabs are missing, I'm just gonna get everything started. And we'll try to get everything to close up the best we can. Just, just make it look a little better, more presentable. Maybe even replace some of the screws. And no worries, if it still doesn't all fit together all perfect, you can also, um, the mirrors, they happen to kind of hold all this stuff all, the, all together as well, fairly decently, so. This one, somebody uh, did something funny. There's, there's a longer screw, so you know the tab is just busted. Put a little longer screw, that's not normally what it would have had, but that's what's gonna need to hold this thing all together. 
and it still doesn't quite hold. Just barely holding there. So typically, if I was restoring a scooter, I would have replaced all these plastic parts that are kind of missing tabs and in poor shape. Levers feel pretty good. Go ahead and put the horn cover back on. A single screw in the center. And why put that ugly faded badge on there? Inexpensive upgrades, just put a brand new badge on there. So let's snap that in there. And of course, this is what mechanics sometimes overlook. It's the grease that you leave behind because I was touching greasy things. So there's grease on the paint. It's nice to have clean microfiber rags handy. And we'll put the mirrors back on and take it on a test ride, make sure it all works. So yeah, the, the front turn signal wasn't working. So sometimes, see, sometimes it will work, sometimes it doesn't. Of course, the act of just removing the bulb and reinstalling it sometimes will fix it. But you can always use a little screwdriver and scrape the contacts. A little corrosion on the base of the bulb. That's just kind of what you get. Make sure it's all working correctly. Look good. Put the bulb back in there. So that's the only thing electrical that I noticed that was not functioning correctly. Put that back in there. And we'll put the little plastic or the rubber cap that holds it all in place back in. And carefully close up that glove box once again. So I think we're all set. Take it on a test ride. All right, so we know it's all good. Time to put the mirrors back on. Um, this one, you just start threading in there and be careful, it's pretty easy to cross thread this thing. The good thing is it kind of holds the handlebar covers all in place. And we can get a 17 millimeter wrench and go ahead and tighten that lock nut. And the mirror's nice and in place. Another one you're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket, preferably a deep one. Drop that right through. Go ahead and put the nut on the socket. And there's your mirrors back in place. These are original mirrors. Let me paint them. This was a red bike originally. All right. Well, thanks for watching. That's pretty much sums up how you change the speedometer cable, how you rebuild the whole entire front hub, including re-greasing the bearings and so on. Got new brake pads in there. So this thing is fresh, probably ready for another 20 years. These motors are pretty rock solid. Um, I don't see why you can't keep this going for a while. Till next time, Robot here from Vestman Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. If you're looking for any parts found in the video, some of the specialized tools, the grease, just go to the web store, ScooterWest.com and go right in that search. And we got you covered, we got it in stock. And maybe you're looking for more on your Vespa to fix it up. We have cosmetic parts for these older Vespa ET4s. Everything grips, replacement mirrors. They may not be the color matched ones. Uh, headlight bezel, this upgraded headlight, which is a very popular item to replace because the headlights are notoriously unreliable on the US spec ones. Um, whatever you need, you could keep these things fixed up. Uh, something that can't be said about some other stuff that's 20 years old. See you on the next one. Robot here.